To develop software for Intel Galileo and Intel Edison, we have four main methods. One, you can use the Arduino IDE, a special version from Intel. Two, you can use the Intel XDK for IoT platforms. Three, you can use Intel IoT SDK with Eclipse development. On four, you can just access Galileo or Edison as a Linux platform, that it is, and develop directly on the board with command line. First, Arduino IDE for Intel IoT platforms. Installation on your PC is very easy. Just download the software and run it. It works on Mac, Windows, Linux. You'll need the Intel version of the Arduino ID. Do not try to run the regular Arduino IDE with Galileo or Edison. On the board itself, uh, the Arduino emulator is already installed on Galileo and Edison by default. Just update the firmware with the uh, a recent version. That's all you need. Very easy. So Arduino ID is designed for very simple projects only. Uh, you won't go very, very far with this ID, but it's very easy. The documentation is fantastic and the community is huge worldwide. You can interact with the regular Arduino community. There is no problem at all. First problem, potential. The original Arduino board is based on a microcontroller. There's a software emulator simulating this microcontroller on Galileo and Edison. But Intel IoT platforms are processor-based. That's why with this method you're only using a minuscule fraction of the processing and networking potential of the Intel platform. So you can make IoT projects with this method, it totally works, but only basic IoT project, not smart IoT project like you could with Intel boards. Second little problem you have to keep in mind for advanced projects, compatibility. The software emulator can't fully emulate the microcontroller, specifically the real-time aspect of it. First, because the OS is not real-time itself, running on Galileo or Edison, but also because the granularity would not be the same. So the result is that some core Arduino IDE libraries are not available. Most of the simple code will work exactly the same on Galileo or Arduino, but some sensors like depth sensor or some LED strips won't work uh, easily or won't work at all. Conclusion for Arduino IDE, it's uh, very good for electronicians with very limited software skills. They really appreciate the Arduino IDE, usually. It's great for makers with Arduino experience, because you can take your knowledge on hardware. It works out of the box. It's good if you have a minimal interest in software on Linux, and with no interest in moving to production later, because it's not designed for that. Now let's talk about the Intel XDK IoT edition. Intel XDK is designed for JavaScript developers, focusing on web development or app development. Um, so there's limited functionalities on libraries, but validated kits of plug-and-play sensor. So it's IoT development made easy. It's limited, but very easy. Uh, installation of the ID on your PC is also very easy. Uh, the only problem is flashing the micro SD card that you will need to boot um, Galileo. For Edison, it's a lot easier. So, if you like JavaScript or web development and you don't really like other languages, that's great for you. If you know Intel XDK already for web development, that's also perfect. 
If you plan to stay within the boundaries of the plug and play sensor kit that uh, we validated and recommend, that's great. But if you want to go further and plug any sensor or any Bluetooth or device, uh, it may be uh, blocking and not good enough. But that's good for a start. And that's great if you are not interested on the Linux part of uh, Edison and Galileo, if you want to keep it inside the Intel XDK. So compared to Arduino, you can add a lot more code with the Intel XDK. It is real software development. And you can evolve into Linux uh, Node.js development if you want to go further later. So it's easy to start, but there's a lot of potential in terms of uh, evolution. And now the Intel IoT SDK. So it's a very typical setup where you have your Eclipse uh, fully configured, delivered with the SDK, running on your workstation, and communicating with the IoT board. So you don't really have to do a lot of things on the board itself. It's uh, hidden from you. And you don't have to deal with Linux if you don't want to. It's mainly targeting C developers or C++, but Python is also uh, available. So the core public for the IoT SDK is, uh, first, if you are a C developer and you like developing with Eclipse and you don't like command line, make files and Linux C development, that's also good if you don't need Linux access because you can work on your workstation. And it's good if you don't need to add packages uh, on top of the SDK on the board. It's great if you don't want to work with Linux, for example, if you come from Visual Studio. And it's good to work with C if you want high performance C code. So compared to the XDK, uh, C is a lot less fun than JavaScript. But you can evolve into a Linux C development if you want to go further. And now, low-level Linux development on the board directly with command line. So you SSH to the board from your network or from network over USB. You install all the packages you want, uh, all the packages you need, and you code with any programming language that is running on the board. So it means uh, C, C++, Python, Node.js, Shell, Java, Whatever works on Linux will work on Edison and Galileo this way. So the great thing is that you have nothing to install on your PC. Uh, you just need a, a little software to SSH to your board. So it's great if you want to organize a workshop and everybody's coming with their laptop. Uh, you are working with a command line editor, could be Nano, Emacs or VI. So it's a lot less advanced than Eclipse and all the tools like a Magfile are command line based. There is a GCC toolchain on the board itself, but you can use other virtual machine based languages like uh, Python, Node.js and other things. The good thing is that because you are directly on the board itself and interacting with the operating system, you can install a lot of new packages and services or interact with uh, services like Blues for advanced Bluetooth uh, features like a Bluetooth Low Energy, for example. And if you're interested in uh, building your own Linux system, you can interact with uh, Yocto and uh, build your own distribution based on your specification. It's good for professional developers. So it's good for people that have experience with a Raspberry Pi, for example, if you like uh, command line Linux development, you're at home in five minutes. You can connect any sensor on Earth, so not only the validated kits that uh, are supposed to work with the validated uh, SDK, so you can control anything, that's your responsibility. And you control everything at low level. 
So it's great if you want to move to production later because you know exactly what is happening, you control all the software stack. And that's great if you don't want or don't have time to install anything on your PC. You can run everything on the board itself, even compilation. So, good news! There is a perfect method for everyone. I would recommend the following uh, evolution path. So, if you start with Arduino, you won't go anywhere else. You will keep coding with Arduino. There is no easy evolution to another programming method. If you start with the XDK, you can evolve toward Linux or SDK development. If you start with SDK, you can evolve toward Linux if you want. You don't have to for most projects, but you can. And of course, if you want to start with Linux, uh, it's easy to evolve towards a production or professional IoT embedded development. So if you'd like to be a professional embedded developer, I think going with the Linux method is best. Because this course is designed specifically for universities and software students inside universities, we'll use the Linux method, with a strong focus on Node.js Cylon for rapid prototyping, plus C for backup on the production in case you want to move away from uh, Node.js. I think it's the best method to understand how things work inside at low level and learn all the technologies that are part of uh, complex real-life IoT solutions.